Hi viewers, uh, today we are going to speak about this oxygen shortage and before uh, me speaking about oxygen shortage, I think brilliant minds in India are already giving various solutions for the existing oxygen crisis. Someone has said that uh, we have to start producing oxygen from nitrogen and uh, I think it's a brilliant idea. I think uh, overnight we can uh, convert all the iron and steel to gold so that we can uh, become the richest country in the world overnight. So that is a very good idea. Uh, some people have told that we have to tie a cloth uh, with camphor in front of our nose. So that is excellent idea. Probably we can uh, close the nostrils completely and if the patient dies then there is no need of oxygen. So it is a very excellent idea to reduce oxygen shortage. Then another idea is that uh, we have to keep on mudra like this to increase the oxygen levels in blood. So that is also very good. We can just the same mudra, we can just try to snatch someone else oxygen tube and you can just keep it in front of our nose. So that is very good. Another important genius in South India has told that we have to just keep on table front in front of our nose. So no one knows about this simple trick. Just we have to keep on table fan and suddenly the oxygen levels will increase like anything. So day by day due to this oxygen crisis, brilliant minds from our country are working like anything and they are coming up with various innovative ideas and we have to prevent these innovative ideas from going too big. Otherwise, we, our country cannot tolerate it. So I think we have to start analyzing scientifically how to manage this oxygen crisis and when to give oxygen and when not to give oxygen for a COVID-19 patient and how to judiciously use oxygen. So that is what we are going to discuss all about in this video. So the first question is why do we need oxygen in a separate cylinder? So many people, many intelligent people ask, sir oxygen is available everywhere, everywhere throughout the world. We can just sit under a tree and get enough oxygen. Why to buy oxygen cylinders for 1000 and 2000 rupees? Very nice question. So we need to understand that the inspired air in the atmosphere contains only 21 percentage of oxygen. But what is available in the oxygen cylinders is 99 to 100 percent. So we breathe in air, so the oxygen which is vital to our organs, the lung transfers the oxygen just like transfer of money from hands to hands, just transfers the oxygen inside the lungs to the bloodstream. It makes the oxygen sit over some molecule called hemoglobin. That hemoglobin molecule carries the oxygen through the bloodstream to all the vital organs and supplies oxygen to all organs for which is essential for our survival very survival oxygen is essential we all know in covid 19 disease we all know that the lungs is getting damaged and because of that the oxygen transfer doesn't occur properly so everyone will be having anyone with moderate to severe covid 19 infection will have a sense of breathlessness will have a sense of difficult breathing efforts sometimes even it can go to altered sensorium they may talk rubbish they may talk in an altered manner this is all because of something called hypoxia that is reduced oxygen in blood but do you know one simple fact the oxygen pulse oximeter is the tiny machines that we are used to measure the oxygen saturation it doesn't measure the oxygen content at all so is it really shocking yes so this pulse oximeters actually measure something called saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen that is as i said this hemoglobin molecule carries oxygen inside the blood so the machine just tells that whether the hemoglobin carries 100 percent whether it is saturated with oxygen or it is 95 percent or 90 percent saturated with oxygen so our people are very fond of these numbers from our school days or all our parents are like no no only 99 or 100 95 no 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 90 no 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 they are always fond of 100 so that is why our people are crazy towards that 99 and 100 number does it really matter then how do we actually measure the oxygen content in blood that the oxygen content in blood it is called pao2 that is partial pressure of oxygen that is actually measured by blood samples and doing something called blood gas analysis in, in, in this blood gas analysis, we will be able to tell what is the PaO2 of oxygen. So when the PaO2, the oxygen content in blood actually falls below 60, 
a person actually suffers from the oxygen deprivation syndrome that is called hypoxia the symptoms are called hypoxia so this spo2 and pao2 are they really related close to each other so how they differ from each other so when spo2 matters and when it doesn't so to understand that as i said we need to understand something called oxygen dissociation curve so what is that the oxygen dissociation curve tells that once the oxygen saturation is from even 100 percent and even till around 90 percent oxygen saturation actual oxygen content inside the blood that is the partial pressure of oxygen or pao2 doesn't change so whether the spo2 is 100 or whether spo2 is 92 or 93 actual pressure of oxygen inside the blood doesn't change Say if a person with saturation of 95% due to COVID-19 infection and lung problem and he is having a mild difficulty in breathing when in the resting position or climbing stairs. So he will definitely feel better when he gets 100% oxygen through a cylinder. But what is the problem? We have to understand. Say if the person gives intermittent oxygen supply. So what will happen? So there are some things called coping mechanisms in our body. So for say for an example, there is a poor child who is hard working, he is uh, uh, doing some side jobs, he is doing some part time jobs just to get funds for his uh, education. So if that kind of a child faces any amount of problem, he will be able to tackle them excellently because they are just diamond in the rust. They know how to tackle and how to fight against the odds in this situation. But say a highly spoiled child from a very uh, big uh, multimillionaire uh, background so if the person if that child faces with any troubles in his life he won't be able to cope up he will easily break down so that is what happens whenever the saturation is roaming around 94 or 95 percentage etc what happens is that the body develops some coping mechanisms to tackle this it increases the respiratory rate a little bit it increases the muscle efforts so what happens when you suddenly give 15 minutes 30 minutes full 100 percent oxygen you might feel better so all the coping mechanisms will go to nap because they will think that okay 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 this person has started using oxygen so we are not of any use to him anymore so we will go to bed so let him the, uh, the person take care of himself that is how all the coping mechanisms will start to shut down then suddenly after half an hour you stop that oxygen cylinder and if you start breathing the regular atmospheric air what happens due to the absence of coping mechanisms the person will feel more breathless than he was before giving oxygen to himself so that is why we repeatedly say unnecessary usage of oxygen is prohibited that is why there are some guidelines on how to use i think all the doctors will be using the same just because some person has difficulty mild difficulty in breathing one doesn't need oxygen when it is the oxygen saturation is more than 94 percent oxygen is not of any use when it is less than 90 percent definitely oxygen in a certain extent with what quantity and in how, what mode it should be given it will be decided by the doctors and it will be given to the patient when it is rovering around 90 to 94 percent the doctor will decide whether the person needs oxygen or not based on other features such as whether he has any other problems like uh, low blood pressure or any other hypoxic altered sensorium is there something like that the doctor will check and he will decide whether the person needs oxygen or not so what else one can do to overcome this crisis so we have all been telling from the beginning of this pandemic there is something called prone positioning that is you lie down with the abdomen that is your tummy facing the bed so what happens in that the lung air circulation increases to a certain extent that there is reduced requirement of oxygen and reduced efforts for our breathing muscles so that is very one way and early diagnosis and treatment and proper medication that is another way of unnecessarily avoiding oxygen exposure my sincere appeal to general public don't misuse oxygen it is just like fire you can light a lamp with fire but the fire can even catch up like a forest fire and even destroy uh, hectares and hectares of uh, forest or even the entire cities so use oxygen carefully please understand the terms 
unnecessarily oxygen is like a very important drug one should not self administer oxygen without any doctor's advice the doctor is the best person to decide who needs oxygen and who doesn't so don't misuse oxygen so if everyone is aware of this all these issues then we will be able to tide over this very difficult situation safely with as minimal deaths and morbidities as possible let us all hope for a safer tomorrow thank you keep connected we will be speaking about more of these issues and any nutrition healthcare issues many diseases more awareness issues in the future keep subscribe to our healthcare channel thank you bye bye